Well, howdy. It's February 10th, and I'm going to do a review on my duplicator i3. So hang on and get dizzy because I need to flip my screen. Okay, there it is. I have watched a lot of YouTubes, and I have done a few upgrades. A very good one is a cover for the wiring in the back. I did do some turn wheels. And I just made some with a lock and nylon nut. And hopefully that will help to steady the bed a little bit better. This platform is a Gecko Tech, which I got off Kickstarter over a year ago and just came in. And it looks like I've already scratched it. Bed wasn't level. Another major upgrade was going to the larger bearings, one on top, one on the bottom, three of them on the platform. My print started coming out beautiful. I mean, silky smooth. My upgrade next month will be this. Using our Arduino Dewey and the FD breakout board. With a LED screen, large size, which has a standard size SD card reader on it. There is a genuine Dewey, and underneath here is a Chinese Dewey. I believe I'm going to be switching them out. They use different chips. Another thing I've been working on. this little puppy dog. It's labeled S, sorry for shaking, S-L-I-M-C-E-U, which is Bobby Europe. And it was a E3D or D3E, whoa, <laughs> there it goes, hot tip, $12 on eBay, China comes with the cooling fan. I did modify this a little bit by filling in the two wedge size and I added a proxy sensor for a future automatic bed levering. And it's working out pretty good so far. This is revision 4. It is printed in PLA. I will be doing it in ABS later. And then I found this fan. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the thingy verse, but it's the same guy that supplied all the upgrade parts. I did print the Y idler bracket, the rear cover. I was going to mount the control box to the printer. Which, like he says, it's a pain in the butt. You try to move that machine and that controller is a pain. I agree, the SD card can be problems at times getting it in there correctly. But this machine is working good. Once I figured out you have to go through settings every single time. It saves nothing. But... This is going to be my cooling fan. I can find it. There he is. Whoop. And the beauty about this is it mounts behind right to the bearing. It has a little tab that goes in. Then you have to screw it onto the bearing. 
However, there are no threads in the bearing, so I need to get a 4mm metric tap, which I believe I have, and put some threads in there. However, we have we are modifying it. My friend Bob Black, way out there in Friendship, Phil, Tennessee, did all the modifications in 123D make on that assembly. And we do have to modify this to fit the new tip. This thing will fit the I3 as it is. If this tip is up higher, it is actually in the center of the bearing. Uh, slightly up, yep, out in the center. Now my biggest complaint is this. Excuse the shaking. But my curry, Cura, on my laptop is screwy. I've installed it on my desktop upstairs and it works great. But right off the bat, I don't know if it focuses under speed and temperature. I don't see any temperatures for the bed or the excluder. I also, under machine, I don't see what size filament I'm using, 1.75. Another problem I've noticed, and I'll just open this one. Whoa, did he come out big or what? Uh, 2.5 ought to do it. Whoa, wrong way. <laughs> Point two five. Oh, these millimeters are driving me crazy. Now, one thing I notice is if I can find my mouse, if I click on it, there is a rectangle box. Now, I'll multiply this by four, no I won't, by three. <laughs> Cannot fit. Look at that. And you know why? Because of that gray box. You can't overlap them. See that thing move on its own? You get too close and they move. Now apparently what happens is the duplicator I3 prints one item at a time completely. So it needs the clearance to clear the fan and everything else that's running around the table. Seems kind of weird to me. I have uninstalled it. I have installed up to two versions below and the latest version which this is 4.15.0. 04.4 .4. I installed it originally from the SD card that came with the machine and it showed like this and I did an update I don't understand it the one upstairs I can put on 15 items on my table and it prints just like my other ones it will print all 15 at the same time there's no spacing required This is another print I did. See the finish? There is no support. And I believe I did 100%. However, it must have been too low on the table because I lost the bottom. <laughs> but it lets you see what's inside. Cool. I also have a couple of Bradley GT2 kit cars. And I did a couple of the emblems, hood emblems. Came out pretty good. Not as good as the original, but pretty good. But that's my take. I love the machine. It prints really good. These new thumb nuts, or whatever they call them, knobs, 
have locking three millimeter nuts on them. Whereas these just had the regular three millimeter nuts. Which I happen to need to put inside here because Ace Hardware was out of them. But there'll be future improvements as I get the time and effort. But I like the machine. I highly recommend it. For $399, it is fantastic. It is shipped free. I started playing with 3D about two, three years ago, and I made, I bought a bake, maker farm, which was $599, and it was plywood. My friend and I spent one to two weeks trying to get that thing to work, and it still didn't work great. I put the gantry on this with the four bolts. I leveled the table, and I was up and printing. The hand came out beautiful, but... When I try to use this program, they come out like poop, if you know what I'm meaning. But those are mostly gone. Here's an example of one of the foots. And it comes out really nice, except the groove does not fit the sheet metal. When I try and force it, they snap. So I decide not to put the feet on. And here's the cross brace, which actually fits on the sheet metal, mounts to the thing, and you have a foot in the back, and that goes into here, and you have this T-bracket, and that fits up inside here, and then you can pick up the whole machine as one piece. Now you may notice, I put on a nice black handle. But this is going to be the first major upgrade going to the Arduino Dewey, which is a 32-bit, not an 8-bit, 2650. It has the high-resolution stepper drivers. And believe it or not, it was $45 shipped. In 2-3 years since I started playing with this, prices have halved or more. I can buy a hot plate for $12. I used to pay $25. I bought a Dewey off Amazon for $11. It used to be like $30 or $40. I bought the hot tip assembled with the heater and the thermistor and the fan and the hose coupler and the hose for $12 shipped. I don't believe the prices today. A lot of competition, which is really helping us to bring the prices down. There are some of the things I've printed out. It's all PLA. I do have some ABS, which I had used on my Delta machine. So I pulled that out to practice with it. For some reason, it's loose. I don't know what happened to the roller. And I got half a roll of black left. I got some bronze and some orange. Everything else is 3.0, which is what I used on the Maker Farm. But that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. This is a really good deal. I love it. It does what I want when I use Kerr upstairs on my laptop. It gives me all the measurements and temperatures and everything. I put the SD card in. I set the temperature on the machine. I turn the fan on. I go to the SD card and it waits for the temperature to come up before it moves. The head moves up and over to where it's going to print. On this curve, oops, if I turned it on before the beds were heated up, it takes off and starts trying to print. I don't know what's wrong with this one. I cannot get rid of it. But, so I do all my work on the upstairs computer and I bring the SD card down here. 
So, thank you very much. My battery's dead. And I'm out of here. Have a good, do good 3D printing day. Take care. Bye-bye.